say like welcome um yeah, it's great that you're uh, that we have this facility to live stream and record what we've got so we can um do our big spiels and have our big chat and demonstrate what we've got and it will be recorded in perpetuity so people can come back and see it it's a little bit uh more valuable i'd say than for a different experience in an opening um all those conversations that sort of get lost to the wind in an opening we can sort of have here and people can go back and have a bit of a listen and ask questions as we're going um it can work quite well so just bear in mind that um, even though we've been doing this for a while, it's still a bit of an experiment. So Very if, much so. If mm. there's anything wrong, well, John's just been sort of audience to all of the uh, all of the configuration of all of the, the different ways of getting the sound coming through the Oculus headset and also through this headset recorded on the computer and all that sort of stuff. And even though... Um, you know, getting to the point where it's becoming a bit of a regular routine of doing the live streams, it's still fairly involved every so often. Some bit of software will update and it'll go a bit bit funny. Um, so with that in mind, if the levels are funny, we're sort of relying on you to, um, to give some sort of feedback if there is uh, something wrong with mm. the, the recording. In the chat is really good. Yeah, absolutely. So any questions also in the chat, please, please fire away. At any time and um uh yep yeah, so we will throughout we might not respond to questions immediately we might sort of get stuck in sort of running around and and doing our demos and talking about certain bits and pieces but we'll come back to the chat and we'll check that out um i'll just just hold for a minute and we'll come back just going to chase up and um okay so we've got the sound working making sure that the connection is done. So Chris, good to see you um, connected and let us know as the as our live human test guinea pig whether the sound levels at this point are good. If there's anything that's um, that's not working out. Um, the general format is very informal, these live streams. Um, what we're going to do is have the ability to jump in and I can, I can mirror what is going on in the headset so we can, can stream that. We'll talk through the work in the headset and um, then we can take questions. We'll just chat about some of the, if you'd like, some of the technical parts of what we're doing and some of the concept parts and mm. have a bit of an artist talk, sort of talking about the concept behind the work and, you know, things that worked out, some of the experiments that we did, because this is, mm. I'm sort of focusing on experimentation. Yeah, just jump in there. This is not a completed work. There's no completed work there. <laughs> this, is a, this is a work in progress and it's trying things out. So trying things out to see if, what the result would be because i don't know yeah so i mean like experimental in every 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 sense of the the word throwing things at the wall some things work some things don't um some things are sort of proof of concept so we've actually there's one main sort of bulk of the work um and then there's a few different um example scenes of different things that we weren't able to bring in but we had a bit of a play around with them and sort mm. of found them valuable i could easily keep going doing this for because I would do it, I tackle it differently, and things would be different. And it shows there's so many different ways. Yeah, absolutely. It's always nice to. I mean, like, it, if you end up at the end of it with more, more questions and more ideas, mm -hmm. and that's kind of nice. Um, I'd like to acknowledge Australia Council for the funding support for this um, project. Um, we wouldn't be able to do it without that support. So thank you very much. Um, I would also like to point out that this is one of many live streams that we're doing. So if you enjoy this, if you find it interesting, all of the previous live streams that we've done are archived on the Facebook page and also on YouTube. So um, you can check that out. And the next set of artists that we'll be working with will be progressively archived as well. So mm -hmm. keep an eye on the Facebook page. We'll announce the next live streams. And um, all of that sort of archive of videos will be put up there for you to have a look at. I'd also like to acknowledge the Gadigal land in which we are, which we are, we are in a real place here. Absolutely. Saint, we're in St. Peter's, not St. Petersburg, as I can. <laughs> My brain keeps... <laughs> well, it's a bit lefty, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. it's St. Peter's. And even, I mean, the virtuality is an interesting thing, mm. um, concept. A lot of people are doing Zoom live streams and it's, it is nice to appreciate. 
um, the the legacy of the land that you're on and the fact that mm. you're actually present somewhere. Um, you can find out more information about the VR studios um, from either the Facebook page, Tactical Space Lab, or from our website, tacticalspace.org. Um, I will, without further ado, introduce uh, John Gillies, who is this um, this studio's resident artist. Um, John Gillies, uh, I know you um, from your most recent work. Mm -hmm. um, it was presented in a couple of different ways, actually. It was a physical install as well as a more traditional um, uh, screening of a, a film. Mm -hmm. um, but, well, I'm just going to open it up. So I'd like to welcome John Gillies, and, um, and we can get stuck into demonstrating the, mm -hmm. the project. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you'd like to. I, I always feel a bit uncomfortable trying to sum up people's practice, yeah. <laughs> given that everyone is in their own position, their own idea of mm -hmm. where everything is. But if you'd like to... Spend a moment talking about what your sort of disciplines and capacities yeah. are in your work. Yeah, I guess I'm um, um, multidisciplinary. <laughs> that horrible word. Um, so, um, and I'm interested in crossing the the, one, the work that you're already referring to, Vidkarts in Malinowski, Cinematic Sounds and Twenty Three Scenes, was mm -hmm. was it's kind of a film with a play within it. So, uh, and it was shown at Sydney Film. Um, so, but other work I do is more installationy, more abstract. Um, I also work with sound and work with music, so music. Um, and I show as a visual artist. I very much see myself as a visual artist, mm -hmm. um, working with it. It's my training, but, uh, I use these other forms with at various times. Um, do you want to talk about the the more in uh, the sort of um, departure from? I mean, coming from a visual arts discipline, mm. um, it's not really a departure for you, but it's but that presentation that you did with the installation was was really interesting. Uh, which 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 one? With that you? work, sort of in um, in a spatial context. Yeah, I, I haven't actually Vikarta Malinowska. I haven't actually. Um, installed it in the right way that I want to install ah, it, okay. so it's still to be seen. Well, hopefully, I was going to see it this year, but as we know, it was cancelled this year. Okay. So um, it it's that works very much experiential, where the audience is inside a space, which is like a train carriage, which is like a tra uh, uh, also like a cinema. So it's a drawing analogy, and they're surrounded by. Um, we've just we been told that we stopped, stopped transmitting. Mm. Can we do about that? Mm. Need more people really to um, to pop up. Well, mm. we're everything looks green on this side, and it looks live. Can there. anybody else hear us? We've got nine people listening, so um, there should be an opportunity. Let's yep. comment. Mm. Are Dang. we still live? It's um interesting point of departure whether. Um, Chris's internet has gone or our internet has gone. <laughs> <laughs> I can still see you. Okay, okay. great. Cool. Oh, Cameron. Hi, Cameron. Uh, okay, this is volume. Oh, this out. is a volume okay. issue because okay. this has got a... I shall speak more loudly. Okay. I don't know where I was up to. Um, so, yeah, so I guess the installation thing is very immersive. Um, use that word. And um, something... Um, I come from the point of view of making my work of what does the audience feel, what does the audience think, and um, what, what experience are they going through, and I, I make my work around how people read these things or how they experience these things. So I guess that's an interesting crossover to this kind of technology. It's not that far, really, actually, in a way. Uh, I mean, at some point I'd love to talk because I got quite excited about um, uh, exploring a nice install context for this for this particular work mm -hmm. um but what i will do is i will jump in to the headset and um uh or which who wants to, I, how about i go first i walk mm -hmm. around you can guide me to look and look around different areas mm -hmm. and um you can talk about what i mean what i'm seeing through mm -hmm. that work okay 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 so i'll just start I'll just, it because obviously everyone else is seeing that in two dimensions so it's a very different experience Obviously. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so that's something that we will have to, you, it, a little bit of uh, um, suspension of dis disbelief in terms of what the experience of standing there in front of the different um, different figures actually looks like. Um, let's see, you so have got... I've got a few messages here which says people can't see it. Okay. Um, no video visual. Hmm. Mm. I really hope it's working out. Okay. Can people see us as well as hear us? Mm. My internet is good. Mm. <laughs> so okay. I, it could be your I end. I suspect yeah. other people's mm. um, better. better. Okay, good. Yeah. Just if anything goes wrong, and I will write this in a message just as a thing. Um, I think um, a lot of people have been having problems with internet in the last few days. Um, I certainly have. Luckily, I'm locked into the fastest possible, screamingly, screamingly fast tortoise speed <laughs> NBN um, connection here. Not future proof at all, but at least sort of substantial. Um, then. Um, Thanks, Claire. Okay, cool. If anything goes through the video, give us a yell. Mm. Cool. All right. Um, I'm going to jump into this. John, let me know if um, the head, if you see, if the, the visuals come up. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, that's okay. That's meant to be blank at this stage. So Joss has just um, left this area and moved down to a, a larger area, which is um, about six meters round um, um, which is surrounded by black curtains and he's put on the headset and you will see what he is seeing a representation of what he's seeing anyway um, is that working can you see anything yeah the background's meant to be black at this moment we can't see anything yet okay oh there uh, we go this is the place? okay he's in. so those those um sprites are a little bit subtle then for the the oh I see is there anybody else outside? So, if there was, we'd know by now. I'm sure you're right. But you can't be too sure. Not the way things are at the, mo at the moment. Do you hear that? Wait, did so you hear should be able to hear the audio. I'm listening. Okay, they can hear the whispers. I'm listening. And they can see it. I, okay. I won't go until I've heard it. Can you hear the, it all. Can you hear the dialogue at home? Are you all right? Or should I leave you? You can't leave all this behind. You know that. Sure. I'm listening. Did you hear that again? Now I'm here. Um, John, can you see I us? I um, But we both the on the Oculus microphone is going up on OBS. We come in here. Yes, it is. Okay. We see the light is on. We look so around. what I'm seeing here, see this, this is shot there. with a um, VR 180 we camera. Yes. So actually, even though we it's hard to tell we from what this. you're seeing, this All back has a depth element to it. Mm. I don't know. And also, it's it's much less jerky than what you're seeing at home. So you're seeing a very jerky so version of what's I happening. Here so when you when you walk around, you the, you're me. drawn by the whispers. To, well, uh, and and some visual elements which you can't I'm really still see. Hearing it, though. Um, to really? to an area, and then you um, these figures appear, You're still and there's here. a figure in front of you. Can't see at the moment, and a figure behind, and they they have a dialogue, and um, you can listen all the way through that dialogue to the end of that um, that sequence. It hasn't, and or um, you can move off towards another area of whispers and then you will enter another dialogue between two characters or um, whatever they are not, we don't know um so i can it should run a little bit smoother uh what was there is heaps of things going on on the computer at the moment it's streaming and it was recording yeah um and i've just turned off the recording um so this should run a bit smoother. that's a bit better yeah this is the place. They've left the lights on. Is there anybody else outside? If there was, we'd oh, know. I've not now. seen this one before. This is clear and clear. So 
Um, I'm sure some of right. the performers are here, I think. But um, you can't see Claire Grant. Is, Not the way things are at the moment. Did you hear that? Wait. Did you hear now, it I've again? got a, a shout out to I'm all of the performers. Um, uh, Meg Clark I'm is on the floor. Claire Grant is on screen now. Uh, Pollyanna Nowicki. Right. Um, Gideon Peyton Griffiths. Um, do you want to talk about this sort of um, interstitial space the, of tuning into? Yeah, so we have. Um, it's a bit hard for you to hear the di all of the dialogue, but um, the dialogue's about being in a space. Um, is this the place? Is the first thing that first person says, and. Um, it's, it's kind of a self-referential dialogue. Um, it's kind of interesting at the moment because all the theatres are shut down and performance is shut down. So um, it's kind of making a, a, a performance space within um, the headset um, that can be experienced one by one. So um, the, the kind of the script and the, the dialogue that's being spoken is kind of inspired by the situation that we are in the moment, which we're in a place. Um, and I've left it very open. Um, there's a, the, the performers direct their questions to, to their lines to you because you are physically placed between two characters with the headset on. So if you turn around, you'll see the other character who starts to speak. So you are implicated into the work by being so close to them. Um, and that was something I was interested in exploring in this work, um, intimacy in performance. I just uh, into Yeah. Um, I, uh, is this the yep. place? Yeah. To give this. And it, this is the um, In the theory, on. all of the combinations of different performers would be... Um, is there anybody of, else outside? If there was, we'd know by now. Randomized yeah. and sort of combinatorially sort yeah. of um, involved, so all of the, everyone could sort of perform against each other. Yeah, we've got this sort of locked into a few different videos at the moment. But um, mm. this is a demo, so it's a proof of concept, as as you said. Is this the place? And this yeah. the same perform. This is Meg this Clark. This is the place. The same performers the appear. Pollyanna Nowicki. Is there anybody else outside? Um, the same performers was, uh, appear a number we'd of know times. By now. But always saying the I'm same sure dialogue, so right. they're kind of caught in this loop, sure. this endless loop of repetition, the of re the repeating moment. the same dialogue about being in this in this place. And um, should we talk about the the sound um, in the two different bits? So another thing that people probably can't fully appreciate, although maybe more so than um, um, than you at the moment, if people are wearing headphones to listen to this. Yeah. is um, the sound spatialization. So in this uh, whisper sort of thing, this this particular space, we were we did a lot of work experimenting with different ways of spatializing sound. So we've got um, a few different demos that we can show maybe later on of um, recording with a binaural head uh, microphone setup. We did something with tracked sound with a um, real-time tracking to move sound through space. Um, and uh, for these ones, we have these sprites um, here that are sort of, they weren't originally um, sort of fundamental to the design, but we wanted to have something where you would be involved in navigating through the space um, drawn by the sound. So one thing that's sort of not often really made a big deal out of, um, people are more sort of focused on, on the visuals generally, but using the VR headset is a really interesting tool for building really interesting soundscapes so spatialized soundscapes that you can actually move through and move in between different sound sources could be totally dark and in theory you could sort of locate and find the sources of different sounds this visual element um was here just sort of as a, a little bit of an augmentation to finding the different points of dialogue just on the basis of sound um, just to give a little bit of extra sort of visual feedback for what you're hearing as well and sort of guide. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting. I t took um, a re point of reference from 
a uh, from another work where they they were trying to represent conversations, a spatial element to a conversation. So it's taking the volume of the audio and creating this little sort of sprite thing that gives it a kind of sense of performed agency. Actually, as the conversation is going and the words are, are being spoken, there's sort of these little um, points of um, brightness that um, I think works quite well. Mm, yeah. Um, but it, so it, it, throughout all of this, a major focus as well as the VR uh, camera is the sound. And this is using this sort of acoustic model inside here. Different things are going to my left ear and my right ear. Um, it's modeling resonance in the space, in this totally fictional space, in a way that it helps me find where these sounds are coming from. And if I jump into one of the videos... Oops, this is, I just walked into a, into a curtain. Where's the nearest one? This one. If we go into one of these um, yeah. conversations, then the, the sound of the characters the sounds like it's coming from where they should be at yeah. that right distance. So it's kind of an interesting experience outside? to have if them there was, we'd yeah. know feeling to, through the sound. For me, the the most, one of the most interesting things about this technology is the sound. I'm mm. sure you're right. And the sound to actually but you can't lead you sure. and to the way things are create wrong. your experience of a piece. Now remember what you're seeing here is not what you would see in the headsets. This is Did really you jerky, again? what you're seeing at home. I'm what listening. you're seeing in the what if you had the head set on I'm you would it, it's much smoother it. and uh, it's very much it's a confrontation with a person, one to one, eyeball to eyeball. And they're speaking to to you and also to the person behind. Which is that person? Which is the same person? <laughs> you know that. Sure. Should we? Is there anyone? Any questions or anything that could be? Um, I could um, also run through some of the other examples. Thanks, Marek. Early in the game, to um, run through some of our other demonstrations. Yeah. Um, I'm still hearing it though. And I, I guess it, I guess it's interesting. The other thing I was interested too, as well as sound, is that it's a. Um, it's a performance space, and this seems like trying to create a space for performance, and performance in not in the theatre as in a proscenium stage, but in 360 degrees. It's always been a a, a dream of kind of theatre and experimental theatre to be able to work totally within um, 360 degrees, up, down, below, behind. You've got a picture of I don't know. Yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is a picture of um, um, Walter Gropius's 1926 um, total theatre plan. Um, I don't think it was ever built. No, it wasn't ever built. But it's an idea of um, theatre being um, all around in 360 degrees around the audience and it totally reconfigurable, the elements can change, etc. This is kind of a, a dream of what you, how you could, how an audience could be in relation to, to performance. And this this technology that we're exploring here has some of these elements of this ability to be intimate and to be constantly reconfiguring the arrangement between the performers and the audience. Um, and also, in theory, even though what we've got at the moment is sort of pre-compiled elements that are going on, um, you could have, for example, performers who are performing to a VR camera that is, or motion capture or something, where it's actually a live performance that mm, they're responding to. It could them. be live, yeah. Um, and I guess um, um, there used to be a space in Sydney called Performance Space, and every three weeks a different group of people would come in and reconfigure that space and um, put on another performance where the relationship of the audience and the performers was different each time. Um, here, this is a kind of a clunky, clunkier kind of process because, you know, we have to make these things. But I thought I could, here's a kind of the beginnings of a performance space that I could keep building on and adding other elements to and adding other layers and levels that you go through. and um, and it's would be a really quite an intense experience. There's, there's also something interesting that's going on here. When you're confronted with a, a full figure in front of you um, of a person, um, it's very much 
you know, it's kind of banal, but it's kind of a little bit of the shock of like when cinema first happened, when we were confronted, well, be before our time, but um, confronted with um, images of people real size or larger than life. There's a, that same kind of, um, we've kind of forgotten that because we've grown up with cinema and television, and blah, blah, blah. But um, to be con confronted with a figure in front of you, really close to you, speaking to you, you know it's not real, but it's really real, and it's it's kind of a there's a there's a still a, there's a bit of a shock in this technology there, which is I find really interesting. Well, it's also slightly worrying because there's a lot of projects that are focusing on this idea of um, VR as an empathic tool, mm. and um, there's uh, there's I don't know whether I'm just far more cynical than a lot of other people. <laughs> But um, if you remember at a certain point, um, photojournalism was doing things to document um, famine and um, just horrible, horrible uh, humanitarian crises. And these images were coming out that people were emotionally responding very strongly to because they were shocking images. And then um, people became, they, their uh, emotional response became fatigued on the basis of that. Um, so that that aesthetic that presentation of something no longer gave them the same emotional response. And I think it's very easy to imagine, or at least as as lightly without sort of critically engaging with it, that um, experiences that at the moment we are in awe of and have a particular emotional response to, we will become totally desensitized yeah. to them in a like, way which might mean that if you see a real human, you know, you, you're physically present with a real person, some of that experience of um, desensitization in VR might actually make you less sensitized. Actually, there isn't it really. It will change, yeah. A, a sort of um, in opposition to a lot of the research around um, projects of uh, VR as an empathic tool, there are business training tools that teach you how to fire an old <laughs> man who is crying on the basis of you firing them in the perfect way so effectively what that's doing is training your emotional response training you to not be at the whim of your emotional response it's already it's already happened first few years of consumer um headsets that's a very very good example of the other side of of the coin um should should i jump into um the other examples yeah 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 because okay. we're about halfway through so. well we can go over a little bit over yeah. time at some yes um, so I guess the other, the other source for the text, which you don't get from what you did, is um, I was interested in, I'm not interested in telling stories, um, I'm more interested in relationships between um, things and ideas um, and, and the audience and those ideas. And uh, um, so one of the kind of key kind of ideas in a lot of modernist cinema is people trapped in a room for no reason. I sort of... We were in Australia, not complete lockdown. Um, that was sort of came up, like um, these um, films or plays um, that um, had groups of people in a, in a locked up situation and they didn't explain why they were there. And that seemed like a really kind of important kind of sto story. Um, and um, and I'm kind of riffing on that. So probably the first example I found was um, Sartre's no e play No Exit. I think it's 47 or 48, and that that kind of ins inspired this a little bit. But there's there's Bunuel's um, film Exterminating Angel. There's the um, Teshigahara's Woman of the Dunes. There's um, uh, Michael Haneke's um, The Seventh Continent. Um, um, uh, Lanthimos recently, the um, dog tooth, another example in a way, um, and, and there's many, many others. So it seemed like a trope that was kind of uh, a really um, important one in kind of uh, in the kind of in our culture. And I thought I would use this technology to um, extend that idea. And that's that's kind of the source of the text. You you haven't seen it all the way. Through. You need to experience it to understand that. But that's where it's coming from. How are we going down there, Josh? Um, good. I think you can see what I'm seeing at the moment, right? Yeah. Um, so 
just I'd I'd love to chat a little bit more about the concepts of the work and uh, you know how what sort of relationships get set up by the framing of particular um, you know the fact that we're in a, a fairly novel bit of technology there's a particular way of reading that experience mm. and the sort of conversations that you're having um, within that I'd love to chat about that. Um, for the moment, uh, we've I've just um, took a bunch of the experiments that we had done around spatialized sound and things like that, and I just tagged them on so that I can move through them and we can demonstrate some of the sort of activities that we were doing in the run-up to um, figure out interesting ways of using the VR headset. Um, so I, I thought it would be good to sort of run through there. There's going to be some sound in the headset that hopefully won't be too jarring against me talking. Okay, so this example was us first testing the ambisonic sound. It was a cold night, and it does look like um, a reactor <laughs> for a Chernobyl um, nuclear reactor, but it's this is the space that um, Josh is actually in now. Oh, for some reason, the audio isn't playing on this one, which is oh, annoying. Um, that's the main it, thing. In the headset, so what we've done at the moment, all of this is built to the headset, and for the sake of... Um, of doing the live stream we're actually running it from the pc so some things are a little bit different this does work in the headset and we'll um we um we can put that online for people with a with a headset to to um, have a go of as well um what is going on in here was just us testing ambisonic sound recording so you have a microphone that records four different channels and it gives a way of capturing sort of a 3d soundscape um and this worked really well, depending on which way you're looking. It sounds like John is talking into your left or right ear or coming maybe, from different directions. Hey Josh, maybe don't yep. move so fast. Maybe. What? Well, yeah. uh, okay, yeah, yeah, just for the video. Yeah. Um, okay, so this one, hopefully the other ones will work. I can't actually hear the audio, so um, it might be... Was the audio... There's nothing on the desktop audio. I, I'm going to read the audio because mm. I think this uh, disconnecting and reconnecting might have um might have given a problem with that i'll just jump back into our start experience and um have a bit of a play with the audio this is the technical can you is my microphone your microphone's working coming? fine okay i'll just do a little bit of a, of a tweak i think um it's necessary to pay a little bit of a sacrifice to the um, the gods of um, technical failure. I think for these live streams, otherwise it hasn't really happened. So I guess the the other thing, I'll, I'll just say something while you're doing that. Mm. Um, I guess the other thing about the the piece that we showed a little bit before with the performers is that um, there's a kind of melancholy built into it where the where the performers aren't really live um, they they're not we're not really in a real space and that's kind of part of that encounter um, um, and it's kind of there's a kind of a melancholy about our performance having been shut down basically in this particular time. Um, this is all that we can do. This is uh, this is the only possibility that this exists. Okay. Um. Okay. Just tell me when. Yep. Good. Thank you. They've left the I can't hear anything, but um, it says it's oh. desktop audio is working. Yes, this is the place. Did you hear that? Like Did it's upside down. Did you hear that? On the screen here, anyway. Where? Over here. So this is just an experiment. We were just experimenting with lots of different things um, in the last two weeks. Some of which, most of which actually didn't make it into the what you saw before, but just yes. trying out things. Um, like I said before, there's so many ideas um, and so many other ways of 
um, of, of exploring um, and kind of worked out some of the language issues and if you do this, this is what happens, not that. No, it's not. Yeah, well, I think we've got choking happening in lots of places here. I'll come a bit closer. So I can make it a bit louder. Um, Ah, uh, right. Yeah, I, people are saying it's a little bit soft, so I'll just bring up the level on the desktop oh. audio. Oh, too. oh, this one? Yeah. A little bit more. Thanks. Cool. I'm going to try and get this going because we have, I think, six different um, tests that are worth just demonstrating different things. Mm. I think it's nice to talk about mm. our practice, um, the experimental. Mm. And this is an experimental workshop. It's not a, a final thing. Mm. <laughs> and um, I'm going to put the title screen while mm. I fix this. The other, sort of the other thing about this was the process that I went through with the performers is that um, oh. because of social distancing, it was a one-on-one -on -one situation in my studio. So I was physically somewhere else and I shot those sequences and recorded the sound in a different place and then they were uploaded um, via the net to this studio here where they were put together. So it was kind of an exercise in... Um, how you would create a create something uh, remotely? Yeah. So um, your Oculus. Oh, yeah, you're on now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's another work that um, came together very quickly in the last couple of days. Well, another experiment, which is with the um, the Sydney Poet. Um, and performance poet Amanda Stewart and I think there's a picture of Amanda some of you may know have heard of Amanda um, I'll just answer that question of Chris's yeah um, yeah there's Amanda Hydra and Lure photo um, so Amanda is in isolation not not because she's unwell but she just has to be um, and um, so she um, performed a totally abstract um, sound um, little piece um, in her in her house, and it's been and moving around a room in her place, and we um, Josh has reproduced that here, so that if you have a, um, even a pair of headphones or a headset on, you will hear the the, the space. Um, you will hear her voice moving in the space. Just to that question, is it a special mic? Was that in particular about the ambisonic recording, the specialized recording? Um, the H2N actually does support um, ambisonic recording, so you can record a specialized soundscape. Um, it will spit out four channels, and you can put it into um, Premiere or a few other tools and then get it into um, YouTube, for example, supports listening to ambisonic soundscapes. As you look around in a headset or with your phone, with your headphones on, you can hear the sound moving mm. around. Works quite so well. those, for those, who, this sounds like jargon. Ambisonic is a we have mono, we have stereo, and we have ambisonic. And ambisonic is a way of representing the three dimensional space in sound, and then it can be decoded or tracked in different kinds of ways. And it's kind of a new audio format. It actually, it's been around since the nineteen seventies. A British mathematician. Michael Getson was uh, wrote the original papers on ambisonic sound, and it's a, a really kind of so, suddenly now in the last couple of years it's come to fruition in terms of what it possibly do. The last film I made, I actually recorded all of the train atmospheres, which are kind of important in the work, in ambisonically. So they're in, in they're recorded in surround, 
and you could argue that one of the reasons why ambisonic has become so um so much more used in the last few years is is because of vr headsets yeah um i am which actually speaks a lot to the potential for um spatialized sound that vr headsets give you um I think we're good to go with this. I also have a video of the process of creating oh, okay. the, um, the tracking for Amanda's thing. Yeah. Um, like we've got a quarter of an hour left, but if we go over time, I guess that's okay. Okay, so into this yeah. Unity view, let's see. So Amanda did, Amanda um, Stewart did a couple of other work, poems, which, well, pieces that were um, used text, but she didn't want that to be on YouTube because technically it belongs to Mr. Zuckerberg. So um, we, we're we going to, sh we will play one of the more, a more abstract thing that she did. And she did this from the phone yesterday. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. The desktop audio is there. Yeah. I'm listening. Um, the Oculus is not. <laughs> I'm no. I'm listening. So I'm listening. Uh, so this you are hearing now just me um, running around in the space um, uh, testing out um, location. If you have headsets on you will hear the, the if you have headset or um, headphones on you'll hear the is that correct, Josh? Yeah. You'll, yeah, you will hear the spatialization. You'll, you'll hear me walking around um, and making these sounds. Uh, we've is just jumped tracking? to the next thing. This is tracking a microphone that I'm speaking into. That little green. Is there anybody um, else outside? Box is basically where the microphone was. was. We know by now. I'm sure you're right. Ah, the. But you can't be too yeah. sure. So the the previous the the, the, the previous one, um, it's a fix. The microphones is an ambisonic microphone in a fixed place, and I'm wandering. I'm running around it, making sounds. And in this one, um, the microphone I'm listening is being tracked through the space, and I'm holding the microphone and moving around the space, um, and that's being recorded as in three dimensions and then it's being all reproduced right. with the sounds that were recorded at the time. I hope that makes sense. You can't leave all this behind. You know uh, that. All right, so this is our test of our spatialized sound. Um, so we uh, the to next one is, like to Josh just said something to me. Josh is talking, but you can't hear. Where it is. And what we're doing is we have um, a little tracking device. And okay. Oh, okay. This is back to the original thing, and this is just a test of what it would be like with a group of people in in this in this space, in this performance space, in this three hundred and sixty degrees. Your mic's not working, Joss. But yeah, and the reason why what are you saying? I'll have to translate through. <laughs> and this is Amanda's Stewart's. But whack your headsets on. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so okay, this we think is that's us giving you a end. demonstration of recording with. This is the place, yeah, this is the place they left the lights. Okay, so Josh is coming back up from the um, space. Um, yeah, sorry, the Oculus microphone in some of the negotiation of the connection between the Oculus and the computer, that thing turned off, so um, it was sort of without a voice for a little bit. Um, that final example was um, just a binaural recording, which is kind of a nice effect that we don't need to dwell too much on. Um, I did want to chat a little bit about that test of the crowd. Mm -hmm. um, one element of that sort of perception of 3D depth is um, is more cues than just so the, the main sort of mechanical way that we can tell, in theory, how um, how far apart away things are, is um, by triangulating between where it is in one eye and the other, mm -hmm. you know, in a field of vision. Um, but there's also a whole heap of cues that you do around lighting and shapes and, and things yeah. like that. Um, but doesn't our brain do that all the time when we walk into a room? It's doing that? Kind yeah. Of... So the, mm. I, my concern a little bit with the isolation of the characters was mm. that there, would be, there wouldn't be um, so much of those set of cues around relative distance. Mm. Um, so those tests that we were doing with the crowd were sort of playing with something where... Actually, a few lessons that we got out of that was was how easy it is to comp um, the VR 180 um, shots. Mm. So it wasn't totally immediately obvious. It probably sh it might have been, um, maybe it should have been obvious, but the way that that projection of a 360 view is kind of wrapped into an image Sort of like if you take a picture of the globe and unwrap it, the way that the top and the bottom is much, much wider mm. than it should be to fit around that shape. So that's how the image forms um, when it's recorded to the camera. And so it wasn't totally obvious whether we could grab people from one place and move them left and right or mm. effectively around the circle. It was n very, very seemingly impossible to move people further back or further or closer just because all of the, it's um it's not something that's easy to do but comping people in so taking one person mm. from over there and sort of moving them so they're sitting at different points around the circle um worked out quite well that yeah, was yeah, a, yeah 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 nice it's do. quite a it's, a it's amazing when you're in the when you've got the headset on and you suddenly then you're surrounded by a crowd of people. You yeah, know, it's like whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's, They're not too threatening, but it's uh, still yeah. quite fun. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it was, that was a, that experiment worked, and it was an interesting question about where the eye line um, should the camera be the oh, yeah. the height above, below, or this because everyone's a different height. So where is that sheet of paper? I'd love to go through some of those um, those points. That was one of the things that we were sort of making a note to talk about is um, the sort of normative assumptions of the um, of the fictional observer and also the the person who's in that space mm. um, wearing the headset so, mm. as John was saying where the eye line is for mm. um, so we have this is, it doesn't make a lot of sense I don't know to people watching but um, um, when you have the headset on, everybody's looking straight into your eyes. Mm. Um, but to do that means that everyone is on a different level, in a sense, because everyone is a different height. Yeah. So directly into your eyes. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. At the same height. Mm. Um, but that's okay because we're not we're not doing realism here. So. Yeah. The thing that it did mean was that the tall people looked shorter in comparison <laughs> to the short people i suppose it's kind of funny um i did want to show as well so that that project with amanda working with um in isolation um it was an interesting way of working so um i use photogrammetry i use photogrammetry for a lot of the things that i that i do so photogrammetry is this 3d reconstruction process using images um, and as well as being able to build a model of something, it figures out where the camera is, where that, those photos were taken. Um, so what you can do is take a video with it and then run through that process and it will tell you the 
position and direction the camera or the yeah effectively the camera was looking for every single frame of the video so you can replay motion through a scene using that i have a couple of little um little videos of that process so what that meant was that amanda could um sit at home uh find a appropriate space to work within and um send me a few reference images to build that initial model of the space and then um and then a video just taken on her phone um let me cue this up just a video taken on her phone with the actually audio it wasn't a phone it was a uh... A little camera yeah so in theory was, the phone would have um been better a little but, bit the yeah. camera ended up um trying to be too clever and shifting focus and things in the mm. midst of it which was um was a bit of problematic um but i'll just show you so this is our reconstruction of the space that she was in a lot of these sections of white wall it doesn't get just because there's not very much um, points that it can can figure the world out with um but Got a fair n fair number of reference points that it's um, figured out within that space. Some things work better than others, and then um, it's just looks the like a VR painting. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, this is the one. Okay, this is another reconstruction, a little bit more details. And then here's the turning on the camera points. This is an initial test. You can see all those blue points are the position and direction of the camera. So from those, you can just replay basically the motion of the camera through the space. Um, which she was also recording the sound into, which yeah. you heard, which was the shh, shh sounds. That so because we had the audio um, and those sort of position information, we can replay that through space. Mm. Um, it worked mm. quite well just, without having to be there mm. at all, all done totally mm. remotely. Nice. I just answered Miguel's question. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, depth of field is a core issue, um, and that's what I wanted to explore in this um, uh -huh. um, this 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 workshop. Um, but what I what I really found is that um, we're in we're we're not in reality. We're in VR space, and um, and we're we're looking at the performer and that kind of overrides a lot of those things um for me anyway i don't know about other people but that's that's kind of where our, f our focus is so weird kind of depth of feel things because i'm not trying to be natural re naturalistic and put people in a real space or in a room or something like that it's not doesn't really bug me because um i'm not trying to do that so um it is interesting. Um, there's a big difference. What people are mostly used to in terms of um, 360 video is just flat, so non, not stereoscopic. It's mm. just like being inside a big oh, this dome, is stereoscopic. basically. And um, the first one that I saw, the first footage that I saw was actually I was consulting on a, on a project uh, university tour that they were doing in VR, and they had an InstaPro um, camera that captured and stitched depth uh, information and when i first saw that that was pretty amazing to to see the difference between um just that sort of flat image and the depth to think about depth of field because i normally work it's kind of funny um working with john and working in this sort of 360 um context i'm very used to working in six degrees of freedom where you can move around and look around in any direction and all of the things that you're looking at are being represented as 3d objects so you know, one thing is over here one thing is over here um it was we didn't didn't really get a chance to talk about that sort of kind of point of difficulty with a headset and an approach which is fundamentally room scale moving around mm. six degrees of freedom and then the video is just three degrees of freedom where where you're looking mm. um the changes um so we you can see what we did to try and get around that with these little hot spots that you sort of tune into and then go into a diff into a space where you're navigating based on something which is implicitly spatial the sound and you're finding these points and then going to them and then you sort of arrive in this inside the video um depth of field i mean you can f you imagine if you had just thinking going forward um vr headsets are building in eye tracking so you can tell where someone's looking 
um, you can either sort of try and figure out, um, you know, artificial intelligence, um, image processing to figure out how, actually, you don't have to do, you just, you can use something like photogrammetry to work out how close things are in the scene. And then you can fake the um, depth of field. You can fake mm. focusing based on yeah. where people are looking with that. Or get a light light field camera with um, six lenses. That could be a future of capturing more 3D information for doing um, depth of field as well. Um, that stuff, it, it's, um, yeah, it's interesting to think about how even though these images are in theory, representing depth information, they're still flat because yeah. of a whole bunch of different things, including depth of. Yes. Whereas I kind of, I'm kind of thinking that the actual, what the performers are doing and the content of it kind of overrides the kind of clunkiness of things. Mm. Know, maybe that's a debate. Mm. There's a, um, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of interest. I mean, like you can watch. The fact that we can happily sit and watch a black and white movie um, shows that, and maybe a sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah maybe a black and yeah. white movie is superior in some ways because the the audience has to fill in the missing bits, you yeah, know? and that's why it's such a beautiful experience because you yeah. you've got to work, and that's maybe why that's sort of the approach I took in this is taking information away, not including all. Yeah. I thought that maybe we would go through. We've done it in the past. Our just ideas document. As well, if you're happy to do that. this mm. one. Here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. So I just thought I'd talk through some of our initials. Um. So we actually were thinking about the possibility of doing volumetric, sort of using VR Which would be cameras for volumetric, and that would be, you know, fairly trivial. Trivial actually, taking the the depth information from the VR camera and using it to build some um, interesting volumetric motion tracked sort of thing um a few different experiments and bits and pieces this is us figuring out also another thing that we haven't really gone into detail with is just the workflow just dealing with what the camera outputs figuring out the best settings for it i wrote i spent many many hours building um scripts for premiere that would nearly instantaneous much longer than probably it saved me time for but these things, you hit the button and it goes mm. through and this is really basically around. just a workflow um, experiment, um, um, and we still haven't still I would, haven't quite got there. But um, um, yeah, that's part of the whole thing is a work finding a workflow. So then you could concentrate on the ideas and the, what the work is actually about, mm. so that everything else just falls away and technically falls into place. That would be the most beautiful thing. Yeah, absolutely. because um, we. Some kind of work, my work method for this is not 100% there yet. Um, you would get a better result if you go another step, but you know, we know certain kind of work methods that they work in certain kind of ways. Um, that's, that's the kind of the beauty of doing something like this, is to work out these workflows and work out these working methods. I wonder what, I'm always interested in the ethics of the experience. So one thing that I was kind of interested in was or potentially concerned in whether John was trying to torture the audience um, no, definitely through this not. experience. And, oh, well, you know, um, I was, it was very interesting going to this um, Electric Dreams, I think it was called, a conference on um, immersive storytelling in, in Adelaide just before the lockdown. And a lot of people were talking about um, uh, a, an awareness of given that it's a it's a immersive technology um thinking through where you are taking people and sort of mm. taking seriously that idea of presence and and what um emotionally that experience would be like to be thrown into a certain experience or exposed to certain things mm. um i always think that's an interesting question hmm. we're doing quite well for that oh, um i've got some call outs to do just look at my checklist again with questions of okay what what was it i think we've gone through talked about some of our 3d spatial sound recording experiments some of the experiments with using the the camera in different ways um would you what do you reckon to these questions do you have anything that these are what how why now in the, the oh, context I think that's of kind it? of answer. 
Oh yeah, that's a great idea. Well, we can take the top. Yeah. We're just going to show you the actual camera. Yeah, because it's um, it's pretty dinky. That's it. There it is. And what what it, it's not really high tech in a way. Big big. Um, so yeah, it's got a left and a right eye in a sense. Um, the images that we're getting out of it, part of it for me is an always an experiment in looks. Every work or every work that I attempt to do is kind of like a, a new, a different kind of look. And this is what what kind of look could you get out of this technology? And what it's doing is it's actually, um, it's kind of simplifying the image too because it's lacking a lot of information because of the codec, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's getting the the figures look kind of interesting because they're kind of almost a little bit artificial. Mm. Um, yeah, and that's kind of something. Um, that's working for me. It's not trying to reproduce reality exactly. I'm not. I'm not trying to make a simulacrum of, of, of reality. That, that's a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think we'll have to wait to um, to showcase the um, install context. So the reason why I built this big yes, correct. Sort of circular mm, Insta three hundred and sixty. Yep. Yes. Um, Evo, this one, it's got a little feature where you can sort of, it's actually taken another Insta360 camera, the One or the One X, I think either one of those, which is a 360 camera, and they just took the guts out, and um, so what you can do is twist it to be a 360 camera, you lock it and unlock it. Monoscopic. And then um, we we'll choose to have a, a stereo VR 180 mm camera um so that's kind of a cute bit of kit i don't if you didn't have a 360 camera i suppose it would make sense to use it occasionally um i i, I haven't really looked at what the output for 360 is but is. um this install that we did about a four meter diameter um space um one reason why i wanted to to do that was um just to sort of break that um, what would you say that um, that idea of VR of VR works only existing within the headset where mm -hmm. you're like okay you know you can ignore everything else the experience starts when you put on the headset and everything gets beamed into your eyes and ears I kind of wanted to give some focus to the staging of the experience especially because it's taking place in quite a I'd say like quite a um, an particularly staged weirdly artificial fictional sort of you know this void that you're creating has got a weird sort of um tone to it mm -hmm. so well, the I, void is something that you create your space in yeah. yeah so it's up to the audience to fill that in yeah right yeah we don't have to so i i, I take issue with with a lot of computer animation stuff that tries to fill in everything that fills in everything uh, that tells us everything um um Maybe the more interesting thing is if we fill it in ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Well, so this is that that mm. opportunity. And, mm. and actually, um, I think in the last one with Louise Zhang, the last live stream with um, the artist Louise Zhang, I was talking about in that context of rendering out these environments, it's very hard to keep things for the imagination because you have to every in all directions, everything that is visible is something that you've had to make some sort of decision about what it looks. Like. Um, you can maybe put fog, you know, you, with with that one, even if you make fog or try and do those sort of atmospheric effects that are a way of creating some gap between knowledge and of what's there, um, your fog will look terrible, maybe, and then that will be another thing that people are reading in a particular way. Um, so it's interesting to use that void as a, as a way of not... That's your imagination. Mm. Um Cool. Do we have any questions? We're sort of coming to time now. Mm. I think we've gone through. I'd like to thank Warren Armstrong for um, for lending me the binaural head. Um, another good bit of kit. Um, yeah, another amazing looking bit of kit as well. Let's see our co-pilot to the. Um, is he visible? There he is. Um, and yep, all the actors, everyone else involved. If you've, you've done your um, call out, yes, Gideon, Claire, Polly, Anna, and 
and um, Meg. Um, and, and Amanda, then, of course. Yep, absolutely. Um, and if there is no questions, no one's got anything else that they want to um, jump into, there'll be some documentation of the install space um, with our documentation video that we'll, we'll sort of put out and, later. And next week, hopefully, some of the performers will come and actually uh, um, put a headset on and actually experience the work. Yeah, so it's um it's before we take this down. It seems like a little bit of a waste for two weeks, so we're going to leave it up for a few extra days and give people the opportunity to come and experience the VR in this in in that context. Um, totally within the, um, the regulations of social distancing, apparently. So. Mm -hmm. as well. Um, good. I uh, thank you, John, for no, thank um, you for thank working you for with inviting me. me. Um, yeah, it's been a real pleasure, mm -hmm. and it's been really interesting. I don't come from a film background, oh. working with actors, any of that sort of the performance part of things. That was really interesting seeing you work, mm -hmm. seeing. The... Really good. Um, okay, so we're going to stop the stream. It's going to be archived. Um, there is going to be another live stream, I think, in about two career out for the announcement of that um thanks claire yep that was a pleasure having everyone here thanks for joining us and um yep if there's nothing else say goodbye thank you for for joining us on this evening and um cheers yep. <laughs> good evening <laughs>